This video looks at graphing logs. Now it follows on directly from graphing exponentials, um, remembering that they are inverse functions. So that means an exponential and log graph are reflections in that y equals x line. So your x and y coordinates swap. So x becomes y and y becomes x. Okay, so that's the same for all coordinates. So here x is 1 and for that reflected coordinate y is 1. Here y is e, reflected coordinate x is e. Finally x is negative 1, y is negative 1. y is 1 over e, x is 1 over e. So because they're inverse functions, your x and y values are swapping. So let's look at our log graph. If we look at the bases, you can see your log base is between your log base 2 and your log base 3, remembering that E is approximately 2.7. So that makes sense. What else do we have? We have our vertical asymptote. So your vertical asymptote for a graph that has no horizontal translation is at x equals zero. So there is your vertical asymptote. So if we go back to our standard graph or thinking about y equals e to the x, that has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. And that's impacted by the vertical translation. So when we're looking at our log, log base e of x, it has a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. So again, those x and y's are swapping. Now our vertical asymptote is going to be determined by our horizontal translation. Okay, so down the bottom here, I just have the characteristics remembering um, that your x and y's are changing. So because of those inverse functions. So y equals e to the x, your domain is x as an element of the reals and your range is determined by that asymptote, okay? For y equals log base e to the x, your range is now um, an element of the reals, but your domain is determined by your vertical asymptote. So just a nice summary like you were given for the exponential graphs of your translations and transformations, that plus minus in the front is the reflection on the x-axis just like for anything else. And I've drawn a couple of little graphs here. So this is if it's positive and that is if it's negative. Um, your A value is your dilation from the x-axis. So if it's between 0 and 1, that's a vertical stretch. If it's greater than 1, it's a vertical compression. Now, your base of your log is your steepness. M is greater than 1, steeper um, for x is an element from 0, 1, and flatter for x is an element of 1 to infinity. Um, if M is between 0 and 1, we have a reflection on it, the x-axis. Um, our plus minus in front of the B here. Uh, that is our reflection on our y-axis. So positive is standard, negative is reflected. That B is a dilation from the y-axis. Um, between 0 and 1, you've got a horizontal compression, greater than 1 horizontal stretch. Then we have our horizontal and vertical translations, which are as per normal. Okay, so plus H means it's moving to the left H units, minus H means it's moving to the right H units, plus minus K, plus K moving up H units, minus K moving down. So remember that our vertical asymptote is given by the horizontal translation, so that plus or minus H. 
So if you're moving to the right H units, your asymptote is moving to X equals H. If you're moving to the left H units, your asymptote is moving to X equals negative H. And that's what that says there. So let's try and sketch one. This says sketch the graph and state the implied domain of each of the following. So log base 2 x minus 5 plus 1, it has a horizontal translation 5 units right, which means its vertical asymptote is x is 5. Okay, so that's from that minus 5 there. The plus 1 is our vertical translation. So we're moving up one. Now, in this case, we're going to find our x-intercept or our exponentials. We found our y-intercept. So x-intercept is going to be when y is 0. So we've got log base 2, x minus 5 plus 1 equals 0. Solving, um, change to from the log to the exponential. So x minus 5 is 2 to the negative 1 or x minus 5 is 1 over 2, add 5 to both sides, so x is 5 and a half. So that's the point, 5 and a half, 0. Um, our one other point. For this one, think about the base of your log. So in this case, it's base 2. So you want x minus 5 to equal to, and you'll see y in a second, so that means x is 7. So if we let x is 7, we have y equals log base 2, 7 minus 5 plus 1, which is a log base 2 of 2 plus 1. Log base 2 of 2 is 1, so that's 1 plus 1, which is 2. So we have the point 7, 2. I'm going to sketch. Um, using a ruler would be a great idea. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Our asymptote was x equals five. Um, we have our one other point at seven, two. We have our x-intercept at five and a half, zero. And then we need join those coordinates and label our graph. Now the question also asked for the implied domain. That's dictated by our asymptote and that will be that x is an element of 5 to infinity or x is greater than 5. Now, another option for one other point would be to try and get a log base of 2 of 1. So that would be that x minus 5 equals 1, x equals 6, because log base 2 of 1 is 0. Um, so that would have given you um, a point 6 and 1. So that's another option. And if you look at my graph... You'll even see that that's on there. Okay, next graph. First of all, it has the minus at the front. So this is a reflection in the x-axis. So whereas my log graph normally looks like that, in this case, it's going to look like that. Horizontal translation is going to be the left. Now that gives our vertical asymptote at x equals negative 4. Our y-intercept is when x equals 0. Now we have a y-intercept here because it is being translated to the left. In the previous graph we didn't which is why we found the x-intercept in that case and not the y-intercept. So y equals negative log base 3 of 4. Now, you wouldn't be able to do this in a tech-free exam, okay? But tech active, we know that's approximately negative 1.26, which gives us 0, negative 1.26. So tech-free, I wouldn't be able to find the y-intercept. 
So what could you do in a tech-free exam? You would be looking at that X plus 4 and using that knowledge to your advantage. So you could go X plus 4 equals 3, going for that base, X equals negative 1. Okay, so if you went X equals negative 1, Y would be negative log base 3, negative 1 plus 4 which is negative log base 3 of 3, which is negative 1. So that's giving you the point negative 1, negative 1. The other option, you could go for the x plus 4 equals 1, which gives you x equals negative 3. So y would be negative log base 3, negative 3 plus 4, which is negative log base 3, of 1, which is 0. So that's giving you the point negative 3, 0. So that is what you would have to do in a tech-free situation. Now, looking at our x-intercept, that is when y is 0. So we have negative log base 3 of x plus 4 equals 0. Log base 3 of x plus 4 equals 0. Go to the exponential, x plus 4 equals 3 to the 0, x plus 4 equals 1, so x equals, take 4 from both sides, and negative 3. Okay, so let's go and sketch our vertical asymptote is at negative, x is negative 4. Use a ruler, label it. Our important points, now I'm going to go as if it was tech free, so I'm not going to use that y intercept. So I've got negative 3, 0, um, and I can pick one of those other points. So negative 1, negative 1. Now this is making sense if we go back because we are reflected. Now if I did was in tech active, there's that 1.26 approximately, probably a bit more closer to that so you can see that that works mind you if it was tech active you wouldn't have bothered with any of this working you would have just gone straight to your calculator and sketched it that's really dodgy so I'm going to redo that not too bad so that's negative one negative one and that point there is zero negative 1.26 label Plus one, now remember that is just log base e of x plus five minus three. The two out the front is your dilation, and that means it's a vertical stretch of two. Your horizontal translation is at x plus five, which means it's going left. So our horizontal translation, five units left, and that gives us our asymptote at x equals negative 5. Our vertical translation is down 3 units. And in terms of other points, um, if I want my x and y intercept, I would have to be tech active. Okay, so x intercept is when y equals 0. 0 equals 2 ln x plus 5 minus 3. 3 equals 2 ln of x plus 5. 3 over 2 equals ln of x plus 5. x plus 5 equals e to the 3 over 2. So x is e to the 3 over 2 minus 5. And that's approximately negative 0 0.52. Okay, so you'd have to be tech active for doing this. And to tell you the truth, you wouldn't bother with any of this. Um, same with y-intercept is x is 0, y is 2 ln of 5 minus 3, which going to your calculator is approximately 0 0.22. So that's 0 0.0, 0. 0.22. So those values aren't going to help you in tech at, um, tech free. Um, what would we have to do? We'd have to look at that x plus 5. That would be our key. So we'd go with x plus 5 equals 
probably our 1. So x equals negative 4. So if you did x equals a negative 4, you'd have that y equals 2ln negative 4 plus 5 minus 3, which is 2ln of 1 minus 3, which would be your negative 3. Okay, so let's go and sketch that asymptote x equals a negative 5. I have that negative 4, negative 3. And if I was tech active, I'd be using that negative 0 0.520, which might be about there, and the 0 0.22, which would be there. Oh, that looks really bad. Give that another go. <laughs> Not a great curve, but it will do. Y equals 2 ln x plus 5 minus 3. Not really happy with this curve here. 